senior professor uh, Sri Rangaswamy, uh, faculty of uh, TNDU and participants of the program. It gives me immense pressure to be here in Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, with which I have had a very long association. It is very apt that Professor Sri Rangaswamy is here. At the time I returned from the U.S., I had a meeting with him and I was discussing about what other areas I can choose besides agrobacterium, TDNA, transfer. He suggested to me two areas. One is mongoid yellow virus, yellow mosaic disease, and the second is developing sheet plant resistance by genetic engineering. And I have spent the last 25 years precisely on those two problems. Uh, that precisely tells you how I have been molded to work in India through my interaction with Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. And I have been associated with the Center for Plant Molecular Biology from the inception. We had a Center for Plant Molecular Biology in Koyamitra and also from uh, Madurai. And my plant pathology research was strongly supported uh, with the consultation with the plant pathology department over here. So whatever I learned on cheap plant disease, I went to Dr. Swami Appel, from whom we not only got the contention, but we also learned how to do the cheap plant uh, research. And when we raised the transgenic plants, uh, transgenic rice with cheap plant resistance, it is Tamil Nadu Agriculture University which helped me to conduct field trials, not only in Payamitra, but also in centers like Ardhundurai and Ambassador. So, based upon what the long interaction I have heard had, and through the association I had with the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Ramasamy, academically for a very long time, with Dr. Sadasivam, the former Director of Center for Plant Modeling Capacity, I am extremely happy to be here. I am particularly at the juncture where I am retiring from my university. Uh, today I will be speaking about the work our lab has been doing on yellow mosaic disease and also towards the end I will be talking about cassava mosaic disease. My journey on Nebula viruses started uh, in National Pulses Disease Center at Bombay and through my interactions with them. On the yellow mosaic disease, we collected uh, from the field yellow mosaic disease samples and we started cloning the Mugbeen yellow mosaic virus, which happens to be a bipartite germinal virus with a DNA A component and a DNA uh, B component. Now, we normally think uh, for any bipartite Begomo virus, there is one DNA A and one DNA B, but to our surprise, the material that we collected from Mugbeen, we were able to clone one DNA A and five different uh, DNA B components. The disease turned out to be exceedingly uh, complex. And one of the ways by which you prove that whatever the DNA molecules you clone are biologically relevant and infectious, so we use a method called agroinfection to demonstrate the infectivity of the cloned viral DNA molecules. What you basically do is you construct what you call as a one and a bitmer or what we call as a partial Diver. So this is placed in the TDNA of agrobacterium. Then you do an agroinfection process and within a plant cell, recombination will release a separate upstream DNA molecule which is equal to a replicative form of the virus and that is what is expected to cause the disease. And using this particular method we demonstrated, the DNA A that we cloned was agroinfective with each of the five DNA B molecules and we showed that all the six DNA molecules that we cloned as MOMB DNA A and DNA B molecules, they were all infective and they were all biologically relevant. So once we did the basic molecular biology of the virus, we attempted to develop resistance for the Mulbid endomosaic virus through genetic engineering approaches. We started uh, initially with a pathogen and derived resistance approach and I am going to be telling only a few examples but we have studied resistance contributed by the code coding, rep in sense orientation, rep in antisense orientation, truncated 
version of red and has been already in the gene of red. A nuclear shuttle protein, movement protein, AC4 and AC2 have been already in the genes. I am going to be telling you some experience which is quite relevant to what we can develop as candidate genes to develop yellow like viral resistance. And since uh, Victor Mungo, Black Rag, was not available to transformation, we wanted to develop an alternative system to study the replication of Mungo yellow mosaic virus. We used tobacco leaf segment and asked the question whether the tobacco leaf segment will be able to replicate Mungo yellow mosaic virus. And we found that when we introduce partial diagnosis of A and partial diagnosis of B in tobacco using acrobacterium, we were able to see the appearance of the virus in about five days and viral uh, titer increased in ten days. So we decided to use 10-day agro-infected tobacco as a model system to study MOMB and the effect of plant genes on controlling MOMB levels. The first set of genes we tried is the duck gene in sense orientation and dead gene in anti-sense orientation. If you look at control plants with two agro-infection, very high levels of viral DNA accumulated, but in one trinidic plant, which we call as AP, uh, which express the duck gene in sense orientation, there is absolutely no viral data activation indicating that sense in this particular case is able to offer high levels of resistance against the virus. Although the anti-sense approach uh, gave reduced levels of viral DNA, the best that we got was with the left sense gene. And we also attempted an alternative method wherein, so we took a truncated rep gene wherein the C terminal one third portion was deleted in the truncated drug. It asked the question whether the expression of the truncated drug uh, in tobacco, tangerine tobacco, will offer some amount of resistance or inhibition of viral DNA accumulation. So, this is a binary vector we constructed where we can put truncated drug gene. This is the southern plot to show that we have integrated tDNA copies. And here is the agro infection study wherein we found the plant T1 and plant T4 showed much reduced levels of viral DNA indicating these events of truncated drug integration for high levels of reduction in the viral DNA accumulation. Then came the question with the inhibition in DNA accumulation we saw with reps sense gene and truncated rep gene. Is it because of gene silencing or because of the expression of the rep sense gene and the truncated rep sense uh, rep gene? And over here, this is the plant in which the absolutely no DNA accumulation, and here you can see the accumulation of the rep sense transcript. And this is the truncated rep plant wherein here we saw very high red reduction in the viral DNA. Here we saw high level of reduction in the viral DNA. All these plants, A, B, T1 and T4, accumulated the transcript indicating the expression of the transcript is important in contributing to the level of resistance we saw against the multi-gen virus. And this is an example of what I would like to call as competitive interference wherein so virus is going to be making its own gene products which are going to be uh, using the viral DNA fortification but when you have a tangentic plant in which you make a defective protein that defective protein is going to be competing with the functional protein as a consequence you will not be able to see uh, viral DNA activation. So this towards this we tried with an AC2 uh, what we call the transactivated protein of one with yellow mosaic virus can be used for the competitive interference approach. So we have three versions of AC2 and we are going to be discussing with you what we did with this particular version in which what we call the activation domain is deleted and we took this defective uh, gene which is going to be encoding for a protein which lacks the transactivation domain and we raised the tangentic plants with uh, that particular chain where uh, activation of deleted AC2 was expressed under the control of the base promoter. So this other plot tells us that all the plants have integrated TDNA copies and we also made sure that the truncated uh, AC2 that we used for transformation, the complete gene is present and next we looked at the transcript levels, plants 2, 3, 10 showed various 
level of transcript accumulation, line effectively accumulated, highest level of transcript. And when we took at the agro infection information therein, we took the leaf test of the candidate plants and asked the question how well they support viral DNA accumulation. As you can see, plant in number three, which uh, transcribed, uh, for the transcript level is very high, showed almost no accumulation of viral DNA indicating the defective interference strategy uh, through a truncated form of AC2 also causes high levels of reduction in the viral DNA levels. So next I will be describing to you an alternative that we made based upon RNA silencing and gene silencing approach. Uh, I don't think I have to give lots of introduction on this. I am sure it must have been discussed. All that we did is we make a inverted repeat construct which will make a double stranded RNA in plants. It will be processed by Dyson. You so that you will be able to get small interfering RNA, SI RNA, which will engage. Right, but the RNA induced a silencing complex so that you will be able to target specific viral MRNAs. And this is the way we make constructs. This is the 35 years promoter. We put sense and antisense orientation of the targeted gene with the intron in between. And this will make a double stranded RNA, which will be the trigger for silencing. So, one difference that we brought in in this, uh, let me tell you, this is a collaborative work between our laboratory in Madurai and from the Thomas Hunt Laboratory at the University of Basel. So, rather than taking the coding sequence, uh, we took the promoter of uh, the Bunker Yellow Mosaic virus. So, in other words, we wanted to target transcription gene silencing rather than post transcription gene silencing. Promoter was kept in one orientation over here, opposite orientation over here. We have an intron. So, this double standard RNA construct uh, was used for particle bombardment studies. Our strategy to evaluate whether the happen RNA strategy is working out or not is to take the black lab seeds, germinate them, and uh, you inoculate with the agro infectious construct, the partial diagnosis of DNA, A and B, within about 9 to 10 days, we will be able to see the yellow with the symptoms. And at the same time, you also challenge them by doing particle bombardment with double stranded RNA constructs. When we do a mock inoculation with just gold particles, we expect the endo to come up. If the RNA I is working, silencing is working, so we expect that the final uh, replication will be affected as a consequence. We will be able to see the recovery from the yellow synthesis. The results are like this. So these are the plants which are agro-infected, but mock inoculated only with the gold particles. So these are the plants which are also inoculated, but uh, you know, the particle bombardment was then the core particles coated with the standard RNA construct. Here you can see that all the plants show yellow mosaic symptoms. Over here you find 80% of the plants are showing the Let us have a close look at the result. So this is the plant which is infected due to bombardment. So this is the plant which is subjected to agro inoculation with DNA A and DNA B of Monbin yellow mosaic virus. But challenged with the gold particles coated with the double stranded RNA construct as a consequence, we see high levels of resistance against the hollow Monbin yellow mosaic virus. And here is the PCR to show that the infected plants accumulate high levels of uh, viral DNA, whereas the decoded plants show very little of uh, plant DNA. So this is the work that was published in uh, 2003 in Nature Biotechnology. The first example of showing that RNA silencing based upon the promoter sequences, that is, transcript gene silencing can be used as a strategy to control viruses. And then we did our own work in Madurai, wherein so we took the happy RNA construct of uh, Anduk gene for AC4. So here is the happy RNA uh, construct. We confirmed that all the plants are transgenic by southern. We also made sure that the AC4 gene is completely integrated to transgenic plants. And then we analyzed whether the transgenic plants carrying the happy RNA genes are making small interfering RNA, SI RNA. As you can see, all the six plants made SI RNA. Uh, and both, if we look at more closely, plant number six made lesser levels of SI RNA. All these plants, leaf list of them were taken and they were auto inoculated with DNA A and DNA B of Mungu Yellow Mosaic virus. As you can see, the control plants are accumulating the viral DNA, but all the transgenic plants except this one are not accumulating the viral DNA. Getting the happy already strategy involving 
is very, very effective and can be a good case which can be taken further in order to develop resistance against the multiple homocyte virus. Then I go over to uh, our work on cassava mosaic disease and our work is primarily uh, on Sri Lankan cassava mosaic virus. This is a part of Windows space collaborative work wherein so we wanted to clone and characterize many isolates of Indian cassava mosaic virus and Sri Lankan cassava mosaic virus and determine the diversity of the deep protein sequences and based upon that develop strategies of RNA uh, silently. So we got the uh, genes cloned from isolates from Arthur, Thiruvanandapuram, Vadipati close to Madurai, Namakkam, again Thiruvanandapuram, uh, Malapuram in Canada, and Hero uh, districts. And in all of them, uh, surprisingly, we were able to get only Sri Lankan Kandava Mosaic virus. Dr. Ravindra did not so familiar with that. For some reason, we have been getting only Sri Lankan Kandava Mosaic virus. This is the classical cloning method that we use for uh, cloning the viral DNA. We also use rolling cycle amplification to clone the Sri Lankan Kandava Mosaic virus. And we constructed partial diamonds of A. So this is the partial diamond of A, full length uh, sequence of the partial part of the sequence, introduced into arthrobacteria, DNA B, partial dimer introduced into arthrobacteria, and then we did after infection on a model plant, Nicosiana methamena to see whether our clones are very infectious. As you can see, uh, DNA B alone is not effective. DNA A surprisingly is infected by itself, and DNA A plus B caused a very severe infection. As you can see here, severest infection is seen with DNA A and B, but surprisingly DNA A is different to cause uh, different types of uh, symptoms, but it is infectious. And we demonstrate the DNA A and DNA B groups of Sri Lankan Kassavopsite virus are infectious. And this we have done for all the isolates that existed in the table, so we have done that for all the isolates. And then we did others to find out whether the DNA A and DNA B are accumulating. As you can see, A plus B inoculation gives high titer of DNA A and also DNA B indicating other infection is working very well. So far I have been talking about using viral genes to develop resistance. Are there strategies based upon non-viral genes on the basis of which you will be able to develop resistance against Germany viruses? So this takes us back to one of the earlier work done by Flag Focus Group in Danforth Center where they get used gen 13 single standard DNA binding protein and through some indirect experiments they demonstrated that uh, single standard DNA binding protein can be used as a broad based strategy by which we will be able to get uh, resistance against a wide range of Gemini viruses which are all single standard DNA viruses. Based upon the experience that we have in Acrobacterium, so we wonder whether we can use Acrobacterium VT2, which happens to be a single standard DNA binding protein, which binds to DNA in a non sequence specific manner. And a greater level of attraction of this particular protein is that it is a nuclear localized protein where the Gemini virus replication is possible. So we attempted to see whether the expression of VT2 in transgenic plants will be able to conquer resistance against Gemini virus. So this is the construct that we use, VG2 with an intron under the FIS promoter. So this is a selectable marker. We did southern analysis on seven independent transgenic plants and confirmed that there is DNA integration in all this. And it is also important to demonstrate that VG2 gene part of it is intact. And using VG2 as a probe, we found that the VG2 gene is intact in all the transgenic plants. And then, so we did RTPs here to show that the VD2 gene is expressed in all the tangenic plants. So this is a dark one to show that VD2 gene is expressed in the three VD2 uh, tangenic plants that we took. And we get a beautiful way of confirming whether VD2 is functional or not functional. One of the very interesting features of VD2 is that although it is an agrobacterial protein, it is known to function in plants. To demonstrate that, so this is uh, a tobacco leaf disc kept on minus hormone medium, no tumors will come up. So this is the wild type agrobacterium. So when you infect the wild type agrobacterium, tumor will be able to grow in a hormone independent medium. So the system is working very well. But if you take an agrobacterium strain, which is a mutant for big E, it has everything else, but it has a mutation for big E, then it is not able to form tumors. 
But you, you have maybe a transgenic plant in which the BT2 is expressed. If BT2 is functional, then BT2 should be able to complement the defect that you have in agrobacterium and should be able to support the formation of tumors. That is what you see 